What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. We're talking about Scream 6 in this video here today. I have like another video that's going to have a Scream 6 update in it. Revealing some specific details about the movie from Viewer and on uh, later on today. But this will be mostly just Scream 6 in general for the majority of the video. Only because there was a new interview that came out from Games Radar Total Film Magazine from the, the guys at Radio Silence. Matt and Tyler, I believe the writers from Scream 6 were present. Uh, Guy Busick and James Vanderbilt. And this interview gave us some insight on what we can expect about the movie and learning about gail uh new york nev other stuff about this movie so firstly chad Villa had this to say about the new york setting he said that the city is definitely a feature within the world of scream within the world of scream six we really wanted to embrace it but not in a touristy way in a way that is a lived in city like this is a city that has been around for years and years and there's millions of people around so like i was saying in a video i posted yesterday they have a chance to really build suspense by amplifying feelings of isolation during certain kill sequences, especially if only a select few people and the cops that are around show any kind of care about what's happening since Ghostface is running wild. Like I mentioned with that teaser, the overhead aerial shots of the city, the establishing shots of the city definitely give you a vibe that this is a big setting and these are a select few people we're focusing on in a sea of millions of people that are all concerned with their own lives so when you have those type of shots it really can set into the mindset of a viewer that isolated feeling which will only enhance your moments where you are building suspense and tension when ghostface is trying to take these people out one by one and it seems like no one cares besides the cops and again just themselves and the people who are also caught up in this mess with them it makes those sequences a lot more terrifying because you're so fearful for their life and their survival as a result of some other uh, ca camera work that's been established, like those aerial shots and seeing how busy and hectic the city is. So that was a nice comment there from them. Um, they also they also made it a fact to say to say this about the Woodsboro survivors. This is from Matt at this point, Matt Benelli. He said this is very much a direct sequel, so it's a so it's the characters dealing with what they had to go through in the last movie. That's a big part of this one. It really pushes this story forward. That's a good bit to know because the sequel to the original Scream and previous entries in general have made it a point to illustrate how the events shaped who the characters are right now. So I can't wait to see that. We already know that uh, we have something to expect from Jenna Ortega and what she will be doing as Tara Carpenter because Matt continued on in the interview to say we will learn more about Tara so just again confirming what Jenna has stated before praising Jenna's talent and how she knocked it out of the park apparently in Scream 6 and those are his words not mine Gillette had this to say about Ghostface being in New York I, he said I think we can say that because of the setting this Ghostface there just has to be a level of brazenness to set to set a movie in a city with people around there has to be a level of confidence and brutality to make that character believable in that setting. And he's terrifying. But there was a real opportunity to use the setting and these set pieces to make him scary in a different way. But the teaser um, is one of many fun set pieces that are in this movie. So the subway that we saw in the teaser isn't the only fun set piece I guess we're going to get to see Ghostface stalking people with. Or how they're going to utilize many set pieces to have Ghostface stalking individuals in the city. I mean that goes without saying. One of the other fun places that people are expecting to see play out in this movie is this bathroom sequence that was revealed via a crew member over the last few months Valella had this to say also when asked about Nev's absence making them worried as it was phrased to them before the question was answered they said I wouldn't say worried but we are massive fans of Nev Campbell and what Sidney Prescott is in the Scream universe which is clear as day in that last movie everything we did on five was because we were fans of hers for years and years and years in the Scream legacy so I think that worried is not the right word we played the hand we were dealt and we're very very proud of the movie that we made and the way that the entire cast bonded and came together on this new one and creating that thing and keeping that family element alive was very important to us now it was said that her absence changed the script greatly again i want people to consider that greatly can simply be pertaining to taking her out of 10 pages or so but the screen time could have equated to 5 or 10 to 12 minutes it doesn't mean she had any real significance that required her to be in the story as much as they just tried to write her into the story and they just simply wrote her out of the story going off of how the movie plays out i think that will tell us a great a great lot about how significant her role might have been because if it was a if the movie firstly was centered on her if they didn't have any other drafts ready to go they wouldn't have started sh shooting this as, so as soon as they did still. They, they basically started that schedule the minute it was set to start in June. Nothing was really delayed. 
So I don't think Nev's role, as many people think the word greatly implies, she was hugely involved. I don't think it means that. She might be just made up a few pages of the script and it was a hassle to get those pages out of there is probably what it comes down to. So Gillette had this to say about Gail being in Scream 6. I think there's an opportunity in this story to really dig into Gail's world. And of course, post Scream, post -screen 5, having lost someone so dear to her, that of course being Dewey, there's a lot of emotional story to unpack with her character and people will d definitely see that work in this project. Look, we can't say enough about how incredible Courtney is. Every time she shows up in anything, she's, she totally brings it. And Gail is just so fun to watch as that character. People are going to be really, really thrilled by the story that we're telling with her in this one. Now, just going off of some of the things that we know Viewer Anon has stated over on his Twitter account that I'll make mention of again in a video later on, Gail is going to have more screen time in this movie, apparently, than she did in Screen 5. So we're going to get to see, hopefully, how she has handled the death of Dewey. We're going to get to apparently also see her dodge a punch that's another thing viewer non has revealed she apparently has learned how to dodge a punch why is she dodging a punch though you will find that out in march because i'm not going to share that here uh but there is a there is a valid reason for why she is dodging punches in scream six uh so I can't wait to see that play out. I can't wait to see how her life in New York is and what she's doing, how she's again adapted and, you know, found peace with the death of Dewey, uh, whether that exists at all or not, and how she engages with the, the Woodsboro survivors since they're on her turf now, basically, and they're bringing this ghost face drama back to her, her home front. Uh, in a way so she might have some type of gripe with them honestly in this movie there's so much that they had to talk about in this interview they talked about Samara Weaving and how again it was a pleasure to work with her they talked about Hayden Pantier and how it was fun to see her kind of just go in there and do her thing and seeing her bring Kirby to life because they know they wanted to answer that question that was that was long left unanswered after Scream 4 and they answered that in Scream 5 and then they're continuing to do that even further here in Scream 6 they also made some comments that further confirmed to me that Kirby was not written in as a replacement over Nev's absence or anything like that. She was not a Samara Weaving replacement either. She was someone who was always going to be a part of the movie. I know Hayden in the past has stated that she called them up herself, but I feel as though they always had an intent to have Kirby involved in this movie. It was never a case of, oh, we need you because Nev dropped out. I don't get that at all from this interview. I haven't gotten that from anything that we've learned about this movie in the past either. But uh, that's really all I wanted to talk about when it comes to this interview. I love what they had to say. I cannot wait to see what they do in Scream 6 when it releases in March. I cannot wait to hear more of these fun interviews as we near the release date. Let me know what you guys think about all of this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, subscribe, turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. In the description, I will have links to all my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.